Well, Sonny, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be talking with you again. So I understand that Telenor has just um, assembled, uh, put together, or is testing a 5G multi-vendor uh, core implementation. Could you tell me about that? Absolutely. So, so the, the, the first and foremost, the objective was for Telenor um, to test and test beyond the, the labs actually into certain customers and application environment. The objective they started out with is, is being able to take multi-vendor approach for a 5G standalone implementation. And, 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 and the 5G implementation in this case uh, they wanted to, to test the standalone, uh, meaning the multiple vendor will deliver various different solutions that comprise all into one. So, so that objective uh, was met by having eight different vendors uh, bringing their portion of the solution to the table. One of the for world's first was not only the fact that eight multiple eight vendors had had this the solution working 5G SA end to end. The second unique of that was all of the vendors are all containerized implementation of their software. And all of the containerized implementation of the software is running in their specific case on a Red Hat OpenShift container platform. Okay, so, so first of all, um, you know, perhaps this is a question that would be better suited to them, but you know, from your perspective, why would somebody do this? Why not go with a, 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 a you know one vendor solution where um, this is cutting edge stuff, right? So why not just choose one of the the big providers and stick with that? Why have eight different vendors, which would seem to be adding lots of complexity? That's that, that's true. That's a very good question. Um, and yeah, it'd be such an easy thing to do. Just go with one vendor, as, as most of the world has gone to yet. Most of the world is also going to, as part of our experience with most of them, is is really um, nowadays to 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 foster innovation and to foster business agility. Uh, uh, the world is as much as they can. They're trying to move towards the the, the next generation where uh, innovation comes from multiple multiple vendors and multiple parties, and to be able to take advantage of this innovation and then turn that into their own business agility need. Um, they figured in, instead of the instead of the monolith, uh, they they tried the disaggregated approach, and then invite various innovation from various parties, thus taking the so-called best of breed, um, and and that was the best of breed. You know, Jim, we also see that most of our customers have desired to go towards that, um, yet a lot of people kind of sit back a little bit and are still wanting it to mature and what have you. Whereas this specific customer, Telenor, in their case, they wanted to take that that approach and 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 hit that head on, and 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 they did. And again, as I said, it's been eight months in working, and uh, and all the vendors have worked together. Um, and uh, from what we started to now, all eight of the vendors have learned significant amount. Uh, I know I want to talk about our portion we specifically delivered, uh, and 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 all of us uh, really came out ahead with that. Right. So. You know, looking at that diagram of, of the stack, mm -hmm. um, everything's riding on top of open, uh, Red, Red Hat, OpenShift, Kubernetes. Um, tell me about that stack and, and where does Kaloom uh, fit in? Okay. Um, so, so Kaloom from day one, Kaloom from day one has been a, a Kubernetes uh, based uh, software and our value proposition of the software is basically containerized, quality containerized network operating system. But our uniqueness on top of that, uh, beyond networking and all the different protocols and what have you, we also have fully integrated 5G UPF. We're only serving UPF user plane function, which as you would know, and, and most of the most of the folks we talk to understand and know, uh, is UPF is the workhorse of the 5G networks. Um, where each and every packet must kind of pass through the UPF. So we've got the networking portion, we've got the UPF portion, and the other unique part of that networking portion is our ability to 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 define the so-called uh, virtual fabric and, and view that as as each fabric is like a slice on its own, so multiple slices. All of these are running on top of OpenShift Container Platform natively. 
we haven't taken it, modified the platform, we haven't modified the software, we haven't modified the core OS or anything. We're running natively on top of OpenShift Container Platform. So we have a very, very tight integration with Open Concentric Platform. Now, I also need to be very, very clear, when we started this project, uh, it, it started with the Kubernetes as it existed. And this project, as it moves into the phase two and, and beyond, uh, will run completely on OpenShift Container Platform and all the functions, including Kaloom's, and they'll all be integrated into one single execution platform. Okay, and wh where does this actually get deployed in the network? It's, a, it's an edge solution? Uh, so, so in this case, uh, it started out as an edge and the first two use cases we were testing was the kind of uh, private 5G. Um, that's what they're offering. So, so as, the, as, the, uh, as the release says it and, and the videos are available for that as well, we'll which will provide the links to, uh, shows uh, two different slides going to two different enterprises and traffic being carried. And, and one was a, was a Department of Defense system and the other one was uh, uh, the, the, the radio, uh, uh, National Radio. And, and both of the slides were completely separate from each other and completely secure from each other. Okay. Okay. And um, how, how is security uh, ensured and delivered in this kind of, of an environment? Sure. So, so um, first, I'll speak to our security side, and 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 from that perspective, our slice, uh, we we implement our slice right into the hardware. We're using a, a programmable fabric, programmable ASIC, and completely programmable fabric. Uh, we we put our slice right into the into the hardware, so it is very secure from that perspective. But above and beyond, one of the eight uh, vendors uh, also was Palo Alto. So Palo Alto Security was also involved. Uh, in, in this specific project that, that customer implemented that portion as well. Okay, um, and could you comment on, on the management uh, portion of this then? I mean, especially given that there are so many different different um, vendors that are involved, um, it, it, keeping, keeping the installation simple uh, must be a, a high priority. Yeah, so, so the first phase of it, as I said earlier, we're going to go from first phase to the second phase of it and what have you. But the first phase of it was all uh, attested and delivered uh, uh, within the OpenSIP container platform. They were using Ansible. Um, so they were using Red Hat Ansible platform uh, to be able to do uh, all of the different management and orchestration of all these various vendors and their capabilities. Okay. Well, this looks like a really interesting deployment. Um, are there are there any other key insights or learnings from this uh, that, that you could share? Well, the key learning is uh, after getting through the initial uh, interconnection or interoperability, uh, getting through the initial uh, phases, um, the key learning I must say is it is absolutely doable. Uh, most 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 kind of customers we speak to are waiting for seeing something like this. And that was the one of the world force that we all are very proud of, uh, that it is absolutely doable. Uh, and, 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 and key lesson learned again, initial, initial interoperability, the, the so-called teething pain, once you get over it, uh, the, the network definitely delivers and all eight vendors. Uh, and again, as we mentioned, uh, different AMF, SMF came from a different vendor. UPF came from us. Uh, the, the, the 5G radio came from a completely different vendor. So all of those working together. Uh, eight months, uh, we were based on the learning. Now next one's gonna take a lot less. And uh, we all look forward to taking that experience to our, our next projects and next customers and uh, be able to help them uh, deliver the results sooner. All right, excellent. Well, please keep us updated on that too. We certainly will. Hey, thank you so much, Jim. Good to see you again and uh, great to be able to speak with you. All right, thank you.